The parliament is back in session with a vengeance. The prime minister had a target on his back the moment he stepped in the House of Commons, where, remember, he doesn't have a majority, far from it. The majority of lawmakers, in fact, are fiercely opposed to him, and they're extremely vocal about it. Watch this, just a sample of what the prime minister faced in the House of Commons on Wednesday. I would be interested in hearing his opinion. He should be absolutely sh ashamed of himself. But if the Prime Minister was contrite, if he was browbeaten after the Supreme Court ruled that his suspension of Parliament was unlawful, handing him another humiliating defeat, he didn't show it. In fact, Boris Johnson was defiant. He even dared the opposition to call a vote of no confidence on him and the minority government that he leads. So if in fact the party opposite does not have confidence in the government, they will have a chance to prove it. They have until the House rises. Let them li listen, 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 li listen, listen, listen. I think they should listen to this, Mr. Speaker. They have until the House rises today to table a motion of no confidence in the government. vote tomorrow. But that is a no-go for opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn, who kindly declined the offer and stuck to his guns. That is, yes to an election, to reshuffling the political deck and putting it to voters, but only after an extension to the Brexit deadline has been secured. He says he wants a general election. I want a general election. It's very simple. If you want an election, if he wants an election, get an extension and let's have an election. So here we are in London, once again, stuck. The Prime Minister wants an election but can't make it happen. The opposition says it wants one too, but not now. And in a sign that the Prime Minister isn't done tussling with lawmakers, we're learning the government intends to try once again to adjourn Parliament. This time, though, just for a few days during the Conservative Party conference that begins Sunday. This with less than five weeks before the current Brexit deadline of October 31st. In the words of my esteemed colleagues Richard Quest and Bianca Novello, it would take a chess master to know what happens next. Cyril Vanier, London. This president has basically refused to condemn Putin, knowing that Russia interfered with our election, undermined our democracy in the last presidential election, and really was setting up a way for Ukraine to undermine our elections by getting dirt on Biden he so says, that he I'm could not be reelected. I know people are listening. You think I'm dumb enough to say something like that, knowing everybody? No, listening. but I think he's brazen enough. I think he's gotten away with enough that he does not believe that we can do anything to stop him. He has discovered the awesome powers of the presidency. The Constitution of the United States never anticipated that a president would use his powers this way. And he has learned that he can get away with it. He's brazen. Do you believe that you have to have hearings that develop all of the different aspects of what led to that conversation? Because the conversation in itself arguably is or is not enough to meet the standard of impeachment, which is a very gross abuse of power. You know the standard. I don't have to tell you. But who knew? Who helped in the State Department? Who told you people in Congress the different stories about why the well, money wasn't absolutely. being released? As Giuliani's about, yes. role, the AG's role. Don't you have to know all that first? Well, I think that's a part of the impeachment uh, proceedings that will go on. If you can recall, when uh, in Clinton there were hearings mm -hmm. and that we had witnesses come in, we had people talk about various aspects of the accusations, that will be a part of what you do. Well, you're saying you're ready to go now. Oh, well, I think we will be ready to go very shortly because, as you know, the way the speaker has talked about it, the six committees that have been doing the investigations will be come together, and the speaker's already said the latest revelations about the telephone conversation, the president with the president of uh, Ukraine, uh, has caused us uh, to be focused and understand that something has gone on here uh, that absolutely rises to the level of possible impeachment. The White House in crisis. I'm Jake Tapper. In less time than what would be your typical school day, today we've seen allegations from an intelligence community whistleblower that the President of the United States, according to the whistleblower, abused his power 
by leaning on a foreign leader to investigate Trump's political rival. We heard that the White House tried to bury that transcript using a server only intended for actual intelligence secrets. And now we have some new reporting out first in the New York Times of a president so angry that this all got out, he is seemingly longing for the death penalty for the officials in his own administration who cooperated with the whistleblower. Take a listen to the audio obtained by the Los Angeles Times. Who's the person who gave the whistleblower the information? Because that's close to a spy. You know what we used to do in the old days when we were smart, right? The spies and treason. Right? We used to handle it a little differently than we do now. <laughs> See, today we got a, our first look at the whistleblower complaint about President Trump, the one that sparked this impeachment inquiry. It says, quote, I have received information from multiple U.S. government officials that the President of the United States is using the power of his office to solicit interference from a foreign country in the 2020 U.S. election. The whistleblower goes on to talk about the alleged White House efforts to keep all of this under wraps. The acting director of national intelligence testified before Congress earlier today saying, that the whistleblower and the inspector general, both of whom are the ones that brought this issue to the fore, both of whom were acting in good faith, he said.